Okay, welcome to the latest edition of the First Day Cup Bites podcast. It's episode four uh, on the weekend uh, that the Premier League season actually got started. Uh, it's a podcast for Liverpool supporters in Delaware and their friends, including our good friends uh, Daz from Baltimore and Hytham from Chicago. Um, we're going to talk about Liverpool beat Norwich City very comfortably 3 0 on uh, Saturday evening. Uh, we'll talk a, a little bit about that. Um, we'll then go on and, and reflect maybe a bit more about the return of crowds and the better quality of refereeing, says the script. Um, uh, well, at least that's what Mike Riley was claiming it was going to be. Um, and then we'll look at Burnley next week, uh, 12.30 kickoff, uh, which usually is not a great uh, time, but uh, it might be different next week with the crowds back. Okay, uh, we're obviously missing Sean this week. So we'll, we'll try and get in plenty of references to the interesting uh, messages he shared with us over the week about the 15 players Liverpool will sign once Shakiri leaves. Um, anyway, he, he probably. So they're going to be one million, one million pounds per player because that's <laughs> going to get 15, 15 million for Shakiri, maybe. Uh, if, yeah, yeah. I don't think. Uh, well. So, so we're off on a tangent already, but let's let's just uh, kind of rein this one in. Um, the last thing Sean shared was that uh, the eight million to Leon was done. That was that was at least a week ago. Um, so, uh, of course, we haven't seen him around the squad. Who knows what's going on? Uh, let's let's start at uh, at Cara Road, um, and I'll start with you, Daz. Um, in in hindsight, it was quite a comfortable game maybe uh, this is actually wasn't as hard as we I think predicted it to be uh last week I think we thought that the Reds would would put in a good showing but I don't think we thought that Norwich would ne necessarily um be easy given the crowd uh but it does turn out I don't know if you saw this that um their preseason was a mess um with thanks to COVID they had games cancelled they had players with COVID they had some players out last Saturday with COVID. So um, their preparations probably played nicely into our hands uh, with, a uh, let, let's let's say, you know, very kindly, our uh, top class uh, B midfield, um, but with a few other players who are pretty good. So Daz, what do you make of the, the goings on at Carra Road? Well, um, I heard somewhere, it's probably from the Anfield rep, uh, that allegedly Pookie had lost 10 pounds of muscle mass. Mm -hmm. um, if you remember, our first, I think it's our first goal as a result of, of Verge upending him and us getting the ball back, he sprays it over to the far side of the pitch, bing, bang, boom, and it's, and it's 1 0. So that was, I know that the, the people were up in arms about that because I could have seen it given a foul, and, but I guess we're going to come on to talking about refereeing. It was, it was definitely there was some there was some full blooded challenges that were allowed to happen, which I'm, I'm happy to see because I hope in the long term that means that players will get used to the fact that going down somewhat facilely, to put it, to put it lightly, mm -hmm. um, it'll stop them from doing it or at least give them give them pause maybe to fight a little harder to maintain possession. But uh, yeah, it's. It was a comfortable win. Um, after what happened with Brentford and, and Arsenal, I did have I did have some some butterflies in the bread basket, and and I think that quite a few people probably did breathe in through their teeth when they saw what the midfield was. But honestly, they Kate has been on form. I, I I think we said this last week. He was probably one of the best performers in the preseason. If nothing else, he earned the spot. If it's a meritocracy. I think Ox the same thing. He was he was bright in the preseason. It's probably the most most active and energetic I've seen him in the last year and a half. So he, he earned it. I thought that the Milner the Milner shot was an interesting one. But again, he's on form. He's fit. And I read somewhere that he ran he he covered more distance than anyone else in the league this, on, on week one. It was over twelve kilometers, closer to thirteen, I think. Yeah. So uh, on on merit and on form and the fact that these guys were in shape and ready to go, I think that was was the right choice. Yeah. Uh, Simicus, uh, Chimicus, depending who you talk to, was I thought he was bright, very bright in the first half, uh, and then he had that brain fart in the second half, which looked like it was primarily as a result of fatigue. He looked like he was absolutely knackered towards the end of that game. Yeah. But um, I, I I think it's good to see that that we can rely on him. 
Um, Robbo's Robert, Robbo's got the shirt. I think the, I heard that someone someone said it too, and I think that's that's true. Like he's done enough, but it's it's a sigh of relief that it's that it's not a precipitous drop off. Uh, if he does if he does need a day off, uh, it was nice to see Trent kind of back to his FFS and best. Um, Mo, what what did, what did they say about Mo? He was the selfish one one season, uh, the, the greedy one season wonder. I'm, 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 I'm assimilating lots of things that have been laid at his door. <laughs> So I was in another chat group. I, apologies, I am in another chat group besides ours. What? Um, I know. And um, someone someone typed in all caps, he's a selfish lover. <laughs> <laughs> and then he banged one across for Bobby to knock in with his hat. So I was like, that was, he's like, but he's usually a selfish lover. <laughs> right. Well, Lenny tried to set Mane up at the end of the game, he right? He did. He, did. Yeah. he should have. He should have wellied it. Should have opened up his hips and wellied it. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. It was nice. I think it was. It's a nice way to ease into the season. Like, because looking around, uh, I watched it. I, I, I bounced into a couple of a couple of games and then bounced back out. And it's you can see that there's a lot of people are still are still a bit ring rusty. So if we can get uh, get our noses out in front, um, three or four. Like uh, Chelsea's going to be obviously. I think it's a, it's next week, right? Yeah, Chelsea. Two weeks. Chelsea's, two uh, weeks. Yeah. 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 I think that um, that'll be a good test, but if we can if we can get twelve from the first four games, I think we're off, we're flying. Yeah, yeah. No, I I uh, I, I totally agree. Um, it, it it for me it had a bit of a feel of uh, of the how the uh, 2019 20 season started off on on Saturday. You know, it was uh, obviously it was we were playing the same team in the first game. Um, we weren't perfect, but we took our chances and. And controlled quite a quite a bit of the game, and uh, obviously Alison didn't go off in this one, so we didn't concede a goal. Um, if you remember, Adrian came on and mm. Norwich got a goal in the four one. So, so so Heather, I'll turn to you and we'll, uh, again just try to stick with um, what happened on on Saturday. Um, what 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 were your kind of moments or takeaways from from the game? I think. Um... And you just uh, you saw my thunder, uh, Paul. Um, it just felt uh, like uh, the first week uh, from a couple of years ago, 2019, uh, 2020. Um, I mean, I we all followed them through the preseason, and you know, I remember that preseason too. Um, and I think I uh, yeah, I, I went to the Dortmund um, match here in um, Indiana. Um, uh, the difference is they did not have a great preseason back then uh, versus the one that they just had. And, um, but it was, you know, a, a full preseason everyone was in. Um, there wasn't any tournament going around, maybe Copa America, if I remember. Um, but most of the players were there and um, the same thing happened this, this time. So, the, the, the game itself was, it felt like a, uh, uh, you know, continuation from the preseason, just the play yeah. um, and all that stuff. And it, it was uh, pleasant to watch. I, I wasn't expecting much. Um, again, um, and, and I'm not really um, uh, on cloud nine yet. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, they, they had a good match, but at the same time, we played Norwich and, and um Daz alluded to the first match, the Arsenal match against Brentford and how, you know, uh, Brentford basically played well. And, and if you look at the points, I think, um, so Norwich won it, and I think it was a few weeks before um, the uh, end of the championship season, and then Brentford got in through uh, the playoffs. Um, so... You know, there was those questions, uh, or there were those questions about, okay, is, is, is Norwich going to be the same? But again, you know, because of COVID, because of what the club is going through, I did not expect much. Again, um, everything was was perfect. It was good to see Van Dyke, you know, um, uh, just playing meaningful uh, minutes and, 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 you know, back to his stride kind of. I mean, he, had, he wasn't really challenged much. Um, but it was good to see him directing people and, and, and you know, even uh, playing like a couple of long balls um, to Mo, I think to Trent. 
Um, uh, that was that was just wonderful to watch. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I'm 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 hopeful. I think we're gonna have a great season. You know, barring any injuries, and I'm hoping none will happen. Um, and I think it's 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 just a, a pretty good start. Um, I'm happy about it. Funny you say it, because I think Joel was my tip was was incredible. Like he said, yeah. unsung hero in that game because Virgil looked. He didn't look as imperious, and I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm looking for for to, to for a hair or two to split because I don't have any of my own. But um, he just he didn't look as imperious as he usually does. And but again, he got 90 minutes under the belt, and he's going to go from strength to strength. We didn't concede, and I I think the biggest question we all need to ask was was Luis Suarez watching this game, and what was he doing while he was watching it? <laughs> good, good. Well, that's probably the only saving grace for Norwich, right? They didn't have to have a hat trick of, of his against them. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, it does I think uh, Van Dijk himself did say that he wasn't one hundred percent, and he still had progress to make. Um, so I think uh, w- whether you felt like you were imagining it or not, that's actually what he what he said. Um, but I think I think Matip is a much uh, underrated player. I think that I think uh, a bit similar to Kaita that. For most of the Liverpool career, Matip's obviously been with us longer. When they played, they generally looked pretty good. Um, they just have missed a lot of games. Yeah. And Nabi just looked like he was a more... It's not maturity necessarily. It's just he feels like he's he's the right fit. And someone was saying, it's like, well, uh, the, the way that they described his, his performance was like, but that's exactly how you describe a genie performance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like it's he's doing he's carrying he's carrying all the water for everybody. He's doing all the donkey work for almost no reward. I thought it was interesting he played on the left. And that had to be that had to do something like I guess with with I don't, I, because maybe more on the defensive the defensive end because Ox is I don't think he's renowned for his blistering defensive yeah. capabilities. But I, I, he has a really good almost preternatural. Uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like wavelength, almost with 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 uh, Mo Salah. Like I, it's always interesting to see how he picks them out. And Salah just seems to instinctively know where he's going to put the ball. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. I wouldn't mind seeing him on the right with Salah at, at, from time to time, just to see how that, just to see if that 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 link still works. Yeah, yeah. The thing, to, to be honest, I wasn't so. Uh, I, I, the midfield choice did not concern me as much as everybody has been saying after the game that they were concerned before the game. But I did have a memory of a European uh, Champions League game away uh, probably two seasons ago where Fabinho had played with Chamberlain and, and Keita and the opposition team had a lot of breakaways kind of running through our midfield. Um, it sort of felt like it was unlikely that Keita and Chamberlain would appear in the same game again. Um, in a midfield, but I, I think, well, Norwich are probably not as good as whoever they were playing, and I can't remember which particular team it was, but there may also be a sign of some maturity now about Kaita's game in particular. Um, so, yeah, Even 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 the uh, um, the crosses that he made, he he really picked out the players that um, he wanted. I mean, with, with people like, you know, with the uh, left and right backs, um, it's kind of like that's what they do and it's natural to them but with Kate uh, you know he he was really meticulous about picking who the you know the cross needs to go to um, and I kind of enjoyed watching that yeah yeah so lots, lots to look forward to and we'll, we'll go and we'll talk a little bit more about the Burnley game we just want to spend a few moments chatting about across the league and I think we've already touched on some of the different experiences I mean I think one of the good things for us about playing Norwich and not Brentford, um, and we may face some of what I'm describing against Burnley, is Brentford looked a, bit, a little bit physical, which clearly Arsenal did not enjoy. Um, and we, we really didn't face a lot of that, although I'd probably feel more confident about Matip and Van Dijk playing against the Brentford strikers than I would um, 50 million Ben White. Um, so shout out to Sean, who is in charge of Arsenal's transfer policy. Anyway, um, so... Oh, yes. What it was Sean is. Well, he's doing a great job of messing it up if he is. Um, because apparently they're still trying to sign Ramsdale, are they? Um, yeah, so around the league, you, know, you can talk about Arsenal if you want, but I, I think you know, crowds are back, 
that certainly seem to be a big factor in a number of the games. Um, uh, and, you know, we've mentioned before how City are very good about crowds. You know, best points per game of anybody. Uh, slightly lower number uh, in recent seasons with uh, with fans. Um, and then there's obviously the, the refereeing changes um, that we've seen. So, uh, you know, Daz, fo fo focus on whichever of those you, you, you want. Uh, the crowd noise was it was so pleasing to hear. Mm -hmm. As I, 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 I peeked in onto the, into the Brentford and Arsenal game. I just wanted to see what Brentford was about. And just the, just the noise that was coming from their crowd was like, it was so uplifting. It really was awesome. And then when Sucker came on and they all gave him a round of applause, like that was, that was top class. I really, I really, really appreciated that because I know that he's had a fairly torrid time after missing that penalty for England. So yeah. I just thought it was, a, it was a touch of class from them. I think that they won themselves quite a few followers or like sneaky, sneaky side piece followers that, as, as a result of that, uh, of that, that's that single outpouring of support. So I, I that, that was for me was, was the bit was the biggest part of it. Um, I think we touched on the refereeing. I, at least I, I did see some, some thunderous challenges. The referees is like, it's a big boy sport, get up, dust, dust, dust yourself off and let's go. And, I, and in some of the games where the referee was consistent with it, like the guys did in, in fairness, get up and they, and they got on with it. So it's, it, it seems now that the, the, the tail is not wagging the dog as, as like the hope is, I guess, that it's not, the tail is not going to wag the dog as much. Yeah. Um, Just on the, on the referees, couple, couple of thoughts, because I, I, there were a few things which I thought were absolute stonewall fouls that they didn't give. Like the push on Morpé for Burnley's opener. I mean, he like he shoved him. If you're listening to this, you're not seeing my hand motion. He shoved him before he went in for the header. That should have been a foul. I I, I don't know. Uh, no, the, so so I agree. It's a contact sport, but I don't believe pushing people um, out of the way with your hands is 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 that should be legal. And then the 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 Brentford second goal, like the guy was holding, pinning Leno. It's like mm, I, I'm not sure I'm in favor of these things being let go. Well, we've been we've been parties there too. Actually, funny enough, against the uh, the opponent we'll be facing on Saturday. Yeah, it was in exactly the same situation. It was a corner, if I remember correctly, and they basically DDT'd uh, Allison. They were holding him. Like uh, who was it? It was Chris Wood, I think, was holding him down. Yep, and he just swung it in the back post. Yep, that was pre VAR, right? That go that goal. Yeah, you know I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they would have changed their mind anyway, though. Uh -huh. it wasn't clear and obvious enough mm -hmm. for referees, but unless unless Sulla comes up lost with one leg missing, uh, there's referees very very rarely uh, willing to give him the benefit of the doubt, or any of our front three really. I did see a little bit of inconsistency, so there were definitely guess. So I watched the Everton game, and there was a lot of stuff going on there that was, you know, you know. People were getting away with Richarlison. <laughs> You'll love that if you saw it. I them got a yellow card for diving, which was quite correct because nobody got near him. Uh, probably you'd have got a penalty uh, last year. Uh, but but then um, I noticed a Grealish and that uh, Aaron's in our game fell over a lot and got fouls. Still got fouls for for the you know falling over with with some level of contact. Falling over with intent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the funniest thing about Grealish, uh, now that you've mentioned him, um, so he got the calls, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the usual flopping, which is, you know, it's normal. We've, we've been used to it over and over uh, the past years. Uh, but he fouled uh, Lucas Mora, <laughs> then went after him, like, how dare you flop? I mean, that's that's what you do on the regular. That was, that was to me, that was the funniest thing. The hypocrisy, yeah. 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 <laughs> Putting the finger at him. Well, it's two ways of looking at that, right? One is uh, that he would know someone who dived. <laughs> so maybe that's what he was doing. <laughs> the other, it's always kind of nice when, it, when there's got to be an expression around it, like the uh, the biter bit, <laughs> the the person who's always doing something, uh, getting caught doing that thing. Yeah. Okay. What's the past tense of dive? Is it dived or dove? I think it's is it interchangeable. I think it's dove. So, so I, uh, well, well, we should, you know, we could pull our ignorance here, but I think, I think dived in UK. It'd be a deep pool. <laughs> I think it's dived in UK English. I think dove is, is US English. 
you win. We should be one of those podcasts that has like fact checks at the end that they fit you, on the end, and then we could you win. Come with that. Okay. Uh, the whole so, world gets aside for a man who knows where he's going. Yeah. So you could, you could also see if uh, Zoom has a, a Grammarly extension. <laughs> I'll put it in the notes if you're listening. Right. Um, let's see if anything I've said is true. Uh, Sean's probably no. already screaming. I heard it was dived. Yeah, right, right. right yeah. Get it out. As in Jack Grealish dived again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, he got a foul for something that looked to not have much contact. But anyway, um, so crowd's good. Uh, like higher tempo to the game. Um, I did notice that... Uh, that the, uh, in the United game didn't watch much of it, but the Shaw was being hurried up by the referee. I don't know if you remember, but he, he took thirty seconds over every throw at Anfield in the in the game that had no crowd um, last season. Um, he probably wasted five minutes just hanging onto the ball. <laughs> so it was interesting that that even in a home game he was being hurried up by the referees. I thought that was good to see. Okay, well, let's turn then to uh, talk a bit about Burnley. Let's say 12.30 kickoff um, would not necessarily have the crowds um, kind of whooping it up at Anfield. I feel like it might be different given a full house has not been at Anfield for um, 18 months now. Um, they have taken points from us in the last two crowdless games, um, but they did lose to Brighton, um, although they were supposed to have had chances. They they kind of seem to run out of steam uh, from what I've, I read. Um, what, are you, what are you looking forward to uh, about next Saturday? And what are you perhaps a little apprehensive about, Daz? I think uh, the 12th man will, will, will be more than they can handle. This is, it's, it's, even though it's a half 12, like you said, it's, people will be outside the gates at nine looking to get in. It's, this, is gonna, this will be a festival. Um, I think that if I remember seeing correctly, we did play a behind behind closed doors match against Villa's second squad, right? Or their the reserves and their their kids. Yep, we did. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us go a little more hammer and tongs because we're going to need something that's more creative. So I'd expect to see Tiago. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing Henderson and Fabinho. So if that's going to be our quote unquote first choice midfield, I wouldn't mind seeing it against these guys. I think that the back four kind of writes themselves. And then it's probably going to be one of either or Jota or Bobby. It's it's nice to see they both bagged on uh, on on Saturday, and I I, I know that I've mentioned that I, I'd I'd like to see a clinical finisher, but Jota's a great little vulture. Um, he's, he pops up in those places where like you'd expect someone that's that knows how to finish to be in. So. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him start again and Bobby get the last steady, kind of the same way we did it, did it on Saturday. Um, I, I hope we tonk them. I really do. It's it's such a, it's traditionally such a nervy affair just because it's, you're playing modern football against what feels like stodgy, old, stilted kind of English football from your, the, from the days of your uh, I think we can. We all know what we can. We can expect is kind of those two banks of two banks of four, maybe a, a bank of five and a bank of four, and just leave a striker up top. Uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't, ex, I don't expect it to be a, a flowing affair. Uh, I'd like to see us turn it into it, but I don't, I don't see it because he, I think that the script is usually written when we go and see Burnley. So I, again, you, you you can almost put money on what you're going to see before you even see it um they'll probably try and nick something on a break or for set piece but i think as long as we're disciplined and and, and tidy with possession i think that we'll wear them down and i I'd, I'd, I'd say two nil winners all right well wasn't even asked gonna ask for predictions but two nil win okay well let's uh so, so a couple of things about burnley i think uh at, at anfield um I think we have kind of played pretty well against them in recent years before the crowds disappeared. Um, and, you know, I, I frankly settled for, for one of those three nil aways that uh, where we kind of stroll around like we did in 2019, 20, um, where we score early enough to make, make them not be able to sit back. And then we create stuff on, on the break. Uh, 
if you remember that that three nil was the one where Mane got taken off and was fuming on the bench because Salah hadn't passed to him, which probably plays into some of those memes about Salah's greediness. But uh... selfish lover. <laughs> Selfish lover. Okay, the episode title, definitely. Um, Python, what are, you, what are you looking forward to about Saturday? So I'm not sure if you guys heard, but uh, there was uh, a little bit of booing, I guess, uh, by the by their fans, which is you know um, expected. You know the uh, the plane with the banner. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. so there was there was booing, and, and you know, again, it's just like you know, what gives, um, you idiots. Um, so looking forward to beating them. Um, so the, the, th- the last time we played them was at the end of the season. Um, um, and, and it was 3 0, wasn't it? It was 3 0 in that one, too. Yeah. 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 yeah when uh, uh, Nate scored basically a header. Yeah. You know, expected. Um, so I, I'm expecting a similar result. Um, I know uh, you guys touch on um, the, their tricks. Well, with, when it comes to corners and, and set pieces and all that stuff and what they tried in the last uh, match, the one at Burnley was just to kick the ball forward and let, you know, their big guy would, um, yeah. you know, uh, deal with the center backs or whatever because of their inexperience and all of that. And it, it, it didn't work. So it'll be interesting if they try the same scheme this time. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I think, you know, it's, it's, going to be um, an ugly game by them as it, you know, as always, there's only one player that, you know, I, I kind of pay attention to and, and he's, uh, you know, he has a little, a tad of creativity in him, uh, McNeil. Dwight McNeil. Um, yeah. yeah, Dwight, that's, that's on, on the player. Anyone else is just, you know, um, striking against steel or whatever. It's just, it's so ugly. So, um, not gonna make a prediction. I think we'll win. Um, I think it's it's you know um, it might not be an easy win, but I think we'll win. And and of course, you know the fans are in the stands. Yeah. That's gonna matter a lot. Um, uh, but I just I, I feel bad for Allison playing <laughs> playing them. Um, I, I know there's gonna be a lot of just stupidity around corners and set pieces. Yeah. I think, uh, I mean, the good thing is that we're in Joel Matip. And uh, um, by the way, Arlo, Arlo White, if you're listening, it's it's Matip, not Martip. If you hear his pronunciation of the uh, of our wonderful central defender's name, um, I have a friend in the UK who heard, was over here a couple of years ago and heard the commentary, wondered if we'd got a new player um, called Martip. Uh, anyway, um, they're heading Matip and, uh, and Virgil's, uh, I think, you know, makes playing against Burnley a lot easier than it would have been um, kind of you know, back when we, we, we lost to them uh, in the middle of last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So uh, so I don't know if you have a prediction or kind of a hope about how the game might turn out. Um, I would say, um, you know, I'll go with what um, Daz went with. Um, I'm not sitting it from you, Daz. I just believe in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, two zip, I think. Uh, so one point, and going back to the Brighton match, um, so the ref did not see it. VAR um, did not interfere. I'm just wondering, like the the uh, uh, the linesman, um, you know, it's it, it, it was so obvious. I mean, yeah. Um, so I, I'm not sure what kind of directives are being given to the linesman. Like if you see something from that just wave your flag or whatever, because you could not miss that unless you're looking the other way. So that, that, that's another um, item too. I'm not sure what the directives to the linesmen are other than um, now they can, you know, pull up their flags if, if, if they're sure it's offside or whatever. I think VAR kind of put them behind a, behind another eight ball because I, I remember linesmen were basically there to flag who, which way the throw-in was in. That was pretty much it. And then over time, they were tasked with giving more and more help to referees to be like the extra sets of eyes. And I think VAR kind of knocked that back because I know we've always had, like what happens if, if, you, if the referee knows it's offsides, but he's been, he's been told to keep his flag down until, until uh, the last moment and then you, or until something else happens and someone slides in and an ankle's done. And we're all, we all lament that. 
It's like if you know it's offsides and it looks like it's offsides. I think that they've they've been asked to 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 to, to give pause, and as a result, I think that they're way more hesitant to 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 put their to put their cocks on the block, so to speak. To use an expression. <laughs> Another uh, episode title, Paul. <laughs> so far, yeah. Just um, a big rooster, rooster on a on a on a Lego. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, completely lost my uh, my train of thought. Yes, so uh, I, I don't I, I don't know, but I mean that seems like uh, maybe that's one of the kinks they're working out. That uh, now it's a contact sport again. They need to realize that well, some things when it when when there is contact of a certain kind, that could be a foul. Right? Yeah. It was so blatant, though. Like you could, you know, I bet they could see it. You know, yeah. I, I, I bet the the other linesman on the other side saw that. You know, yeah. it's just like, come on, use your common sense. Uh, it was it was quite quite shocking. Uh, yeah, wow. Okay, so feeling feeling good about uh, the result. Not so sure about what kind of game it's going to be. Um, I I think I you know. If, I, I think this is a game where we'll probably reintroduce. I think we'll start with Fabinho um, for us for sure. Maybe one of Tiago and Henderson as well. Uh, you know, I could see if we score early, Burnley's uh, have, have not been on a great run, uh, starting back at the end of last season. Um, they, and their, their home form is terrible, uh, and they weren't, you know, they weren't that great away. Um, they just kind of had a run, I think, in the middle of the season that made them made them safe. Um, so I, I, I think if we score early, this could be a really, um, it could be a much better game than perhaps you're anticipating. Um, if we don't, maybe you're spot on about uh, it being uh, how, how we manage the low block uh, with um, with you know, the banks of, of whoever they are. I do hope Ashley Barnes isn't playing. He drives me crazy, um, as an aside. <laughs> okay, so um, let's wrap it up with... Um, one one quick thing that you saw this week, and you know, if it if, if it involves Sean, then you know, all, all all the better. So, you want to go first, Daz? Uh, I can't really think of anything that stood out other than um, actually something that happened after after all the matches were done. I know that Michael Richards came out and and had something to say about the fact that if. But it was it was the difference between how the media reacted to Paul Pogba's agent saying that he wanted to move away versus the way that Harry Kane has been coddled as being professional in the way that he's gone about basically wanting away. And I'd like to see more of that. Sadly, it was soon as came. It was I don't know if you saw the clip. But for whatever it, I think it's been well documented that Graham Sunis really has zero love for Paul Pogba. So anytime he can stick the boot in, he will. And I'm not sure what that comes from. Like I, I, I'm not a huge Paul Pogba fan, but I don't think that he deserves the necessarily deserves the 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 the, the guff that he's getting or like the hate that he seems to receive. And it's you can take it in any direction you want. It could be it could be overt ethnocentrism. It could be xenophobia. I don't know what it is, but it's, I thought it was interesting that, that, that Michael Richards uh, put word to that and said, like, how come it's this, it's, there's no parity between the way that these, these two players have been, have been handled by the press? So I thought that was, that for me was, again, I was like, I, thought I, I enjoyed the entire weekend. It was interesting that there were zero ties. I'm, I don't remember that ever being, the, I, not that I really paid much attention to it, but it's, it's got to have been a while since there were zero ties in, on, on day one of, of, of the EPL. So it bodes well. There's a lot of good goals. Um, some, it, was, it, was, it was nice to see. I was, I was, I was, excited, to, I was excited for it to start. And I, I think I could have said this at the beginning of the show, but it's like, I just feel like, a, this, I, I just feel kind of content this time. It's like, I, I think there was because of the pandemic and it was so much invested in, in, in us doing well and, and repeating. And uh, it felt like there was the, the, like it was, it was ripped from us with the fact that we didn't have any crowds. It was, it just felt a little bit hollow. And then we had all those, the horrific injuries. So that's, I just feel that's really weird to say, but I feel like more seasoned, I feel calm. And, and I'm, I've just gone into this thinking like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to enjoy the football this year. 
and that's I guess that's that's and it cemented it after this weekend like I was I wasn't as nervous during the match that I as, as I was when I was watching my wife said like you need to stop watching like you're miserable watching Liverpool and yeah. she might she might have had some she might have had a point I, I, I recently reconnected with a friend of mine that, that I'd known at school and, and we were both big fans and they said they'd stopped watching Liverpool for, for about 10 years in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s. And the whole reason was that they had kind of done this analysis of like, this is making me miserable. Uh, and and they sort of, it, they've come back to it now with a sort of a, a much more balanced perspective where you know, losing is not good, but it, it shouldn't affect my whole week Yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. I probably need to do this program myself, but, uh, um, uh, um, the, the, there was, uh, I, one of the things I, I as you were talking, I, uh, that I was thinking was two penalties this weekend, which is things way down on the average from last season. Uh, and yeah, three away wins uh, out of 10, which is much more of a normal balance with crowds than, mm. uh, than we saw. So, um that that's 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 good that's good so Hytham, um your last word so i got um three things and i'm gonna be quick about them uh number one and i think i shared it with you guys earlier uh, in the uh group chat but uh nico's goal from sunday uh, you know i thought it was it, it was phenomenal you know just the combination of everything you expect from a, uh, a right back um, pressing, um, skills on the ball, and, and, and follow up. Um, if you get a chance, it's everywhere on Twitter. Look it up. It's a really nice ball. I know they were playing probably kids in, in their B team, but uh, it was nice to watch. Uh, the second thing, um, and it was reported that there were some ugly chance um, against Gilmore uh, by you know, our fans. Um, I just, I, I don't get those. Again, it's 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 Liverpool, um, and um, it's just it's it's something that you don't expect from Liverpool fans because you know they always go against the grain and then. Uh, but I understand alcohol has um, a lot of uh, effects on people. Uh, the last thing is just the the whole um, uh, statement by the Barcelona president about their debt of one point five billion, and. Just, I, I would love for, you know, the FSG out crowd to, you know, we talked about FSG out uh, the last episode, um, to, to, to look at that, or one of the last episodes, not this past one, the one before it, but just to look at that and see the turmoil. I mean, 1.5 billion, that's in some countries, that's their deficit, you know, for a whole country. Um, so that was uh, interesting for me. And, and just, um, I know we've lost some money um, because of the pandemic, um, but I don't think we're anywhere close to that. And you know, there'll still be uh, some some uh, Spanish newspapers talking about Barcelona are about to sign blah 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 this week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, and this is for sure. And Sean, I heard <laughs> that Coutinho is supposed to be going to Arsenal. Wow! 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 Is 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 this in the is from the same source that insists that Saul is coming to Liverpool, even though James yeah. Pierce has rubbished that one? I think I might have seen it in the chive. <laughs> or 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 the, or the other one that insisted that Lautaro is uh, talking to Cloak. Lautaro Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we guys got two weeks to, to kind of sort some of this stuff out. Uh, so I'm going to close it with, with a couple of things. Actually, one is um, um, if you haven't seen uh, from. The, the Mike Riley, the referee's chief, talked about there were 19 goals that were ruled out last season that would not have been with the way they're implementing the rules now. Um, I, I tried to find what they all were, but I could only find five. But among the five were two goals, Mo Salah goals, which makes me wonder whether Mike Riley will personally take care of the golden boot and deliver it to Mo's house now, um, <laughs> because clearly he should have should have won it last season. Um the, the final thing, actually, I, I did want to share. There's so many, so many things uh, uh, I could talk about in terms of, of Kane, because there was a piece today being very critical of him saying, how come all the other England internationals were back in training? And he's claiming that he, you know, he didn't skip training, but he wasn't available and he wasn't fit. 
the only other person who in the England squad who wasn't in the match day squad was Henderson, uh, and Henderson had already played a, a preseason game um, and is ready to go next week, whereas Kane may not be. So, um, but my final thing was there was a piece in the Athletic about Thomas Tuchel and his attention to detail and all this preseason stuff he'd done, which sounded very Liverpool like, frankly, um, and how he'd had them away at a camp in Ireland. But, but I was amused to find amongst the meticulous planning was they also played an extra game yesterday against a team called Weymouth, who, if you've never heard of them, you're probably not alone. I, I don't know what tier they're in. Chelsea beat them 13-0. And it kind of makes you wonder whether this meticulous planning <laughs> couldn't have come up with a slightly better team to uh, give Chelsea's B squad a, uh, a run for their money. Anyway. On, on that note, hopefully uh, Thomas Tuchel's great planning, um, well, we'll talk maybe more about that next week, but hopefully his, his great planning is not matching uh, Klopp and company at this point. Um, it's always a pleasure. Thank you, Haitham. Thank you, Daz, for being on. Um, if you like the podcast, please share it with a friend. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Uh, and we're still not reposting anything from Fabrizio Romano. Um, uh, which probably includes a lot of Mbappe nonsense. Anyway, uh, good to see you both. Uh, yeah, that's the episode.